So if I think about what would be the drivers of acquisitions um, and why folks would consider acquisitions, you know, I do clearly think that age is going to be a factor. I mean, you can't you can't run away from you know the inevitable, um, and it is a graying industry. So I do think that there will be more acquisitions that are related to true exits. Um, and I think that will continue to happen between firms, meaning RIAs, acquiring books of businesses that are RIAs. So I do think that could be a driver or more of a driver. I also think though that the industry itself is just getting more sophisticated and educated about acquisitions or generally M&A. And so with that education is much more of a comfort level that that's actually not an unnatural act. In fact, can be, you know, a very good and an accretive solution for all parties involved. So just kind of by the sheer fact of the educational process, um, I think there will be continued uh, acquisitions, you know, not related to a pure exit. More banks are getting back into the acquisition game of independent wealth management firms really for two reasons. One, uh, yeah, the balance sheets of some of these banks are a lot uh, more robust than a few years ago. And two, from, uh, from alternative sources of investment or returns for the banks, lending is certainly not as, you know, as, a, not as a, uh, a, a significant source of revenue. So that may be pushing more of the pressure to uh, do acquisitions in the wealth management space. But I did allude to uh, cyclical uh, uh, buyers, and I do think that banks are most likely cyclical buyers. And uh, again, in my experience, that there are many bank acquisitions that have turned out for the worse, and simply because of the, the reasons why RIAs are successful. They're entrepreneurial in nature, and no matter what the promise or guarantee uh, by the buyer, if you're a bank, you're an employee of the bank. And uh, that typically is a recipe for disaster.